After watching this video, you will be familiar with basic concept of object-oriented system development, and also, why we need object-oriented system, and what are the structural concept of this type of system development. So first of all, what is object orientation? The traditional approach mostly focused on structured system development, and the technique you used was referred to as the structured analysis and design technique, and the language used to make those software is known as functional programming languages, but in early 90s, object-oriented development became mainstream, where programmer designed based onto a real-world object, like a car fan, or even your kitchen mixer, which is why it is called object-oriented. Now, what is object-oriented system development? The process of developing program or software using object-oriented approach is known as object-oriented system development. Why object orientation? Well, it creates models of functionality, easier to maintain, easier to adapt to changes, reusable code, and much more. The concepts like object, class, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, are the foundation of this approach. What is object? An object is something which has its own identity, like a real-world object, for example, car or a laptop. An object contains a state and some behavior. The state of an object is known as properties, and behavior is the functions it will perform, which is usually described using methods, and these methods will be part of the object itself. Now, class. Objects are grouped into a class. A class contains a group of objects with the same structure and behavior. Class can be considered as the blueprint for an object, which describes the properties and behavior of that object. An object is a particular instance of a class, and there can be many objects or instances for a class. In the case of a car or laptop, a blueprint or design created first, and then the actual car or laptop will be built based on that. We do not actually buy these blueprints, but the actual objects. Encapsulation. Encapsulation basically hide the irrelevant information from user. Consider the smartphone you are using now. You are not worried about the internal operations of the smartphone. You only know and care about the operations or functions it exposes to you, such as making call, watching YouTube, or using your apps. The inheritance. Inheritance describes the relationship between two classes. A class can get some of its characteristics from a parent class and then add unique features of its own. For example, consider a vehicle parent class and its child class car. Vehicle class will have all common properties and functionalities for all vehicles in common, and car will inherit those common properties from the vehicle class and then add those properties which are specific to a car. Your vehicle is known as base class, parent class, or super class. Car is known as derived class, child class, or subclass. Polymorphism. Polymorphism means that one operation can be used for different purposes. Poly means many and morph means form. For instance, Java supports different kinds of polymorphism like overloading, overriding parametric. In overloading, the multiple methods having same name can appear in a class, but with different signature. Signature referred as the arrangement of variables. Overriding is defining a method in a subclass with the same name type and signature as a method in its superclass. And the overridden method is called at runtime based on the object at runtime. Abstraction. In plain English, abstract means a concept or ID not associated with any specific instance and does not have a concrete existence. Abstraction in OP emphasizes what is important and what is not important at a particular level of detail. Abstraction allows the programmer to focus on few concepts at a time. Java provides interfaces and abstract classes for describing abstract types. Images of object-oriented software development, less maintenance cost, mostly because it is modular, better code reusability due to features such as inheritance and hence faster development, improved code reliability and flexibility, easy to understand due to real-world modeling, better abstraction at object level, Reduced complexity during the transitions from one development pace to another. The reasons why object orientation works are High level of abstraction, seamless transition among different phases of software development, and courage of good programming technique, 
promotion of reusability. So now you understand what object orientation really is, its fundamental concepts, and why should we use this technique. In the next video, we will be talking about coupling and cohesion. If you find this video helpful, then like this video and subscribe for more informational video like this.